Instructional Designers and in Offices Drinking Coffee is brought to you by Domino, makers of Domino One, the cloud-based authoring tool for e-learning. Learn how your team can work together better at domino.com. Now, here's this week's episode. Hello, folks. Everybody is grooving in their chairs this morning. If you made it yep. to the halfway point, you should congratulate yourselves. <laughs> We've made it this far. I'm seeing some Frank Zappa quotes in the chat. <laughs> That's an interesting twist on the usual weather. Uh, I noticed that too, and I'm thinking to myself, I wonder how, what triggered that. So now I'm going to have to go back through the chat and see what I missed. <laughs> It's noon Zappa, that's what triggered mm. Oh, it's a Wednesday. Thanks so much, Dave, for joining us. We're Ooh, glad to have stretch. everybody here. Looks like we got folks from all kinds of different places today. That's awesome. A couple of couple of folks from the Netherlands too. So Yeah. Excellent. Hey gang, guess what? Um, we have Craig Wakes with what? us here. And Craig, it's it's your first time ever joining us here on Instructional Designers and in Offices Drinking Coffee, hashtag idiotic. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself to the folks that are joining us here today. Sure, sure. How, uh, hi, everybody. It's a beautiful 7, 10 in the morning here. Uh, a little bit early, a little bit early. Um, but uh, if you're not familiar with myself, my name is Craig Weiss, and I have three amazing dogs, uh, Voodoo, Spirit, and uh, Callie. They're not with me right now because I think Spirit would be going bonkers to get out of here. And um, I've been uh, in the industry since, uh, wow, the corporate space since 2000. I ran training uh, at a bunch of different companies. I self-taught myself instructional design, believe it or not, in 2000, and then was previously uh, taught at university and um, doing online learning, actually, but, you know, with a company that was the only one in play in 1999, so I really had no options there. Um, and the, uh, you know, I, I've been identified by my peers and everybody. I'm very honored for that as being the most influential in the learning system space and um, number one expert and analyst. I'm a CEO and lead analyst for the uh, Craig Weiss Group. And uh, yep, I oversee Fine and LMS. And I have another, another, I forgot to put it in there. That would be relevant for people, although it's not, it's called findcontent.io. We, we've launched, I think, a Toll vendors. Uh, we're going to continue and more. And it's not um, where you go and buy content. We're not a reseller or anything like that. It's sort of thinking like, hey, how do you find third party content? It, it's it's impossible to do it on the internet. You get all types of junk. You get people that have paid to be rated yeah. higher. And here you can go and compare a variety of different providers. You can do all these things, see, you know, select as many topics as you want, duration, blah, 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 and click a link and, and whatnot. And then coming at the end of the year, you're going to be able to access a variety of courses that they're putting up there for free and as well as other things. And you can take the full course as much as often as you want. There's no charge or, or whatever it is. It's really because whether you're an instructional designer or an individual or you know, L and B or in the training community are looking for third party. We like to get in and, and touch and take uh, rather than sort of just reading about that doesn't give me the, the thing. And, it, and the other option you have is if you don't do that, then you have to rely on the learning system vendor to have a marketplace is what they call it, or an exchange for you to, you know, select that content. And, um, you know, we've got really the biggest names in the industry pretty much on there, except for you know, a couple, but the mm -hmm. ones you'd be most familiar with. And then we have um, places you've never 
scene and it's global. So it's really kind of a cool thing. It's 100% free. The last thing is if you haven't noticed in the amazing background um, is I'm a hardcore Los Angeles Rams fan, always have been. And, uh, you know, they could have moved to London. I still would have been a fan. And, uh, and I go back to LA, the games. And yeah, I just you can't see it over there, but I have other jerseys. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's about it. And, yeah. And, um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to all these things. And, uh, by cool. the way, yeah, so there we go. And we look like we have almost the same shirts, Chris. We don't. I think if we did, that would be strange. It would be kind of weird, eh? But, uh <laughs> Still, actually, what what we do is we would just make Brent feel bad for not being <laughs> yeah, for not having it. Yeah, thanks, for, guys. Yeah, for, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so today we're talking about the realities and future of modern eco learning ecosystems. Um, and if, if folks don't know Craig, um, it, you know, up until today, Craig always has a lot of things on his mind, and um. What's top of mind for you right now, Craig, when you think about modern learning ecosystems? Yeah, I think there's, um, I'm a huge fan of the term ecosystem. I think the, hmm. the premise of just saying uh, that you have an LMS or, you know, I, I, it's misleading what LXPs are. So I'm just going to, what it was created for and what it's being seen as is very misleading. But nevertheless, people push it and that's their prerogative. And then whatever else they want to call themselves a learning platform, uh, which is the most common as well as an LMS. But you may have multiple components in that ec ecosystem. I always did. Think of your main learning system. And that's a term I, I use for like an umbrella. Let's say you have an LMS. You may have, I always had it as a hub. And then I had other little pieces that was in there. So even though the system may have built an e-commerce, it's always an add-on. If I had, say, um, uh, you know, like an assessment tool, I hate the term, but if I had one, that would be an add-on. When I used a third party, I always use the third party authoring tool. I never had, I never would use the built-in ones. They're horrible. Um, you know, and that would be it, right? And even if a vendor has modules, which I'm not a big fan of, but nevertheless, if they have modules or add-ons is what I call them, that, that's part of that ecosystem. So that's how I see it. And I think vendors have gotten away from that. They just sort of push, which is fine. Look, everything's included. I'm a fan of everything is included because you don't know what you don't know. Nobody saw COVID coming. And then here comes COVID and then everybody's running to go buy a system quickly. So they're not doing their due diligence. And then, you know, nobody saw, I, I, let's look at, let's say 2024, right? Nobody saw generative AI. Some vendors saw it early on. And, and that term is what you hear AI in the industry. It's very misleading. Um, and most people hear chat GBT. Uh, chat GBT remind, it's just a brand name. So, you know, it's like everybody says Kleenex. And they were really <laughs> referring to tissue paper. So ChatGPT uh, is just a brand name at the end of the day. What's called learning language model, and I won't bore you there. But, um, you know, that's kind of really the, the, you know, the main things. And so you don't know what you don't know. And that's why I think all included is better because... If I have, say, um, skill-based, for example, and all of a sudden I want skills, but my learning system doesn't have skills, I'm kind of stuck if I'm in a contract. So you don't know what you don't know. And I always say, when you look at a learning system, I don't care what, what it is. When you look at it, you have to look three years down the road. You can't look at today. And way too many people focus on today. I mean, if you're running it, you're overseeing your L&D, you win the lotto, you're out of there. You're not contacting the vendor. And then somebody else comes in and they may have different expectations. Um, or sadly, you know, what's happening here is that people do lose off their jobs. Um, it's huge. L&D training, HR marketing is always the first ones that get cut. And then who's taking that over? And the, the, 
you know, it could be HRIS and they have no clue what they're looking at. So you're losing out on these things. And, and in reality, why do I have add-ons? Look, it's an additional revenue channel. At the end of the day, this is an industry where you have to make money. You don't make money. Uh, you're, you're not going to be around for a long period of time. You're eventually going to go bankrupt or be, you know, disappear. So I think that when you look at that whole spectrum, that's the way that I, I would put that in there. And I know that's a little bit of a, you know, I try. Hmm. No, no, it's a, it's a good one. I, I think what, um, I think what, what <clears throat> may have been missed in the introduction and some folks may need to get a better understanding of is the fact that you, you are the analysis that you do on the industry is with all of these different platforms and the learning ecosystems that are out there. And you've seen and talked to pretty much all of them or the majority of them. And you do reports and stuff like that on your website and things like that. So you do uniquely see the future before most people do, <laughs> you know, as far as what's going on in the industry, right? That's why, you know, kind of naming this sort of the current state, right? The reality of our ecosystems and then what's going to happen to your point in three years, like the future, like what's, what's down the road and, and, and where should it be going? And whatnot. So I just wanted to toss that in yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna bounce in there. I just kind of glanced at a, you know, a question. I think it's very misleading about the about LMS as being antiquated. With all due respect, there are some that have been around for a long period of time that have more next gen capabilities than newer systems. The premise of a newer system having more of this and more of that is just not inaccurate when you look at the entire market. Most people look at here. So the, the idea that an LMS is antiquated, the idea that LMSs came out for compliance are 100% not true. Um, it's what the client chooses to use the system. You know, when LXPs rolled out, it was all about informal, informal. Um, and then they all added assigned learning. That's formal. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, you know, even an LXP, an LXP today that the vendors are using just means they have content, third party content, big deal. I could have that in 2000. That's not new. And they have a playlist or some grid. That's just a UI. And there's a lot more vendors doing updated UI UX. And I think that's a huge problem. And that's something that you're going to see going forward. I agree. Things have to be refreshed. Everything does. And there are plenty of vendors, LMX, uh, LXPs, LMSs, learning platforms, these weirdo names, employee engagement platform, which by the way, nobody is typing in a search engine. And I know vendors that type use as a keyword LMS and they're adamant they're not an LMS, but people typing that in to get to the search, it's blockers. And one of the things that I always say, you know, a lot of people like is I just have no filters because I'm passionate about this industry and I'm absolutely sort of, it drives me nuts on how much kind of garbage is espoused around marketing. It's marketing. So, you know, let's look at where the trends are heading. And, you know, Greg, you're absolutely right. I don't know why, you know, some people I always say they're just mechanically inclined and, you know, congrats. Me, I can't even pull up a tire. I'm literally going to the dealer. Um, and so I can look at the market. I just see these trends. And I always am thinking, well, how come nobody else is seeing this, right? And it's so clear. So let's look at it. I think there's there are going to be plenty of vendors getting into performance management. Um, this is risky. Whether they do it, in this case, it makes sense as an add-on because not everybody's into it. it. It gets risky because now they're competing against legitimate performance and talent management systems. That group puts learning in because they have to. They don't have an option. And is it the best? Absolutely not, because that's not their forte. And so I see a lot of vendors, you know, eyeing the L&D community. And I've talked about L&D and training are two different modalities. Everybody knows that if they're in L&D and they're, they're trained, they, they don't see the same way, which I think is the right way to do it. So um, I think that when you get into performance management or there's workforce development, that's what a learning system does anyway. I mean, these are not new concepts of, of being unique and there's nothing stopping you. Again, I can buy a customer training system 
which means I'm focused on customer training or client training or, you know, I could be in a, so if I'm an association, I want a customer training system because their features and functionality are going to align better than if I'm an employee focus system. That's just reality. And I'm sorry, I keep touching my screen because it's a touch screen that gets great. Um, and so if I'm doing that, then I'm going to have those kind of things. Other things I see, I'm seeing more and more vendors bring in built in offering tools. They are the worst. Uh, it is for creating something quickly and getting it out the door. And anybody who's done instructional design knows it's all about interactivity, interactivity and engagement. It's not about text and a little image and I'm watching video. Who cares? And nobody's watching the entire video. So that's a trend where people are doing it. And I want to be really clear. Micro learning has been around since 2000. This is not a new concept. It just means short. It doesn't mean good. <laughs> so built -in offering tools are getting, there's more and more. And that was initially a trend that kind of fell off and now it's coming back because they want to be sort of, you know, in a way it makes sense because I see about 20% of the market today is not running L&D and not running trade. They don't have a background. That system's in marketing or in product and sales or, you know, it's been stuck to HR and HRIS. They don't have that background, nor... Even people in LMD and training, they don't want to learn. There used to be a time where you really wanted to learn it, and they just don't want to. And that's not necessarily a trend. I've seen that for a long time. There's plenty of people do, and then there's other people don't. So you have, okay, I'm just going to build this thing, get it out because I have to, and, and, and to the uh, One trend I'm seeing actually is a drop in advanced assessment tools. And again, I'm not a fan of an assessment tool. Um, I'm talking within the system. There are a couple that are trying to do it. Again, why? Why do you want to go to question? You know, I'm going to, I know I don't shouldn't mention names, but there's obviously really a couple of big players. Why would I want to do that when I go in? I'm actually disappointed on one trend I thought would take off. And I think it didn't because of something called generative AI, which nobody saw coming. Um, everything pointed to cohort-based learning as being this big trend. And, and there are vendors that are doing it. And I do believe in 2024, you're going to see something getting back to a lot of it. But I think what's going to happen is that the way it's designed, um, and this is always a trend in the industry, is not the way the majority of vendors are going to do it. And that's actually a shame to your your own your learners and how it can be effective because again uh this is a continuing trend there are just so many vendors my personal belief there are so many vendors out there that really don't know the market and they don't know what these terms mean and really how they apply and, and they just come up with this stuff and go okay and then you don't know which all due respect you shouldn't necessarily know i mean shouldn't know they're supposed to be the experts. And then you just, go, you hear the term. And I think this is what you're gonna see with generative AI. Now, again, a lot of people think that chat GPT, that's just one learning language model. And by the way, that's just text. Um, the, the thing you're not aware of, and there's gonna be more and more, is more and more, the industry today, overwhelmingly, if they don't have generative AI now, and they're rolling it in, they're all going to one, I am gonna mention the vendor here, uh, they go into open, a, uh, open AI, and you see it all over the place. Open AI is just one player. Um, I think Palm 2, which is made by, I'm going to say another one because this is very relevant. I think Palm 2 by Google is going to be way better. It already shows that. Um, and then, you know, if, you're, if a vendor's on AWS, which the majority of them are, there's a product called, again, I, I, I know we're not supposed to, but this is relevant. Um, is Titan. And so if I'm on AWS, when it just made more sense to use Titan, and then there's a solution called Bedrock, which I wouldn't use today. But I think that's going to be a trend is that this is what these products do is that if I'm using a learning system, and let's say it's using um, OpenAI's product, uh, GPT models, or I'm using Stability AI, I can interconnect quickly. So this is where I think there's going to be a problem if you're not using these kind of offerings down the road. You may not be using that learning language model and you have to connect. So one of the trends I do see is, is this, there's a thing called tokens. 
And you, you as the client do not realize this. Vendor does. Tokens become extremely expensive. This generative AI is not a freebie. So when I hear open set, open source, uh, I'm using, and I want the better models, right? The ones are constantly updated and, you know, whatever. That's a fee to the vendor. And so a trend I see already or vendor, how can I skirt that, right? Because this gets extremely expensive. Right? And so I just, to, just to clarify, let me interrupt you real quick. So just to clarify for folks, <clears throat> when you, you mentioned token, you mentioned a fee, the token is basically the the fee charged to the 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 user accessing that uh that that language that server system or whatever so i mean that's that's where you're that's what that means right yeah, so i don't know if i explained it right but <laughs> yeah in, in simplistic terms uh it is every time that learner or it's the client who's ever where it's access he would be on the learner side is every time they're typing in a question or they're typing in a scenario or whatever that data that they're doing is based on is a fee um if it's a thing so it's going back and the way it works is that how did they you know those vendors compute the fee is they base it on characters so you know you write a word that says word the way a token looks at it is parentheses. I'll use that. Uh, the quotes, uh, they don't charge for the quotes. Obviously. There's a space before word. So that's a character. The word is a character. That's five characters. And that's where they base it on. So I think it's about 700, 780 characters. And then these fees, it doesn't seem like a lot. But when you're talking about a thousand people or a hundred people and they're typing in 50 times or whatever they're doing, it, it's a way to, to go ahead and do that. And, and it, there are open source, hundred percent freebies coming from universities that do not charge token fees. You know, if you look at the one from Facebook meta, for example, they use llama which a lot of vendors, you may hear the term hugging face and some other things, that tool does, they don't charge a fee. But if I'm using hugging face and I really kind of look, yes, it's free, but then there is an add on fee if you want better things. Yeah. We, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to take us down too much of a rabbit hole. I just wanted to yeah, kind of but that's, get, 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 let folks understand because that that's pretty deep when you just throw out a term like token like that i just figured we, we might want to put some context around yeah that. so <laughs> yeah thank you for that so generative ai is going to be very big um and i think a lot of vendors are just going to use a brand term so you know uh, yeah and it's imperative so that's going to be hot there are already vendors doing it today and again they have to skirt because uh of the fees uh, so yeah. there, there is a side on there. On the other learner side, I do believe that, you know, skills is going to continue. That's going to be a continued hot trend. They're going to tap it into generative AI. There's no doubt. But what mind. do you mean when, what do you mean when you say skills will be a trend? Well, skills already is, you know, I type sure. in the skill or I select the skill and then it outputs the content tied to that skill. And then more and more vendors are doing it around job roles, right? So you sign it. And then there are more and more vendors that are adding opportunities. So I look at this thing and I go, hey, I want to be a project manager. And so I type in the skills. It says you have 10 out of 15. Then you've got to get the other five and that other content. So that's definitely a trend. That's going to happen. I think it needs to be around reskilling personally, but nevertheless, that's going to be a continued trend. I do believe you're going to see more and more vendors going with add-ons. Um, again, that's an additional fee that that's where it's coming into. There are more and yeah. more vendors. I do believe that are going to go with advanced analytics uh, because overwhelmingly the analytics out of the box, which means out of the box means it comes to the system is poor. So there are some that's, you know, quite good, but it's overwhelmingly poor. So here's an advanced analytics piece that you're going to have. The other couple of trends that I see is going around with um, 
you know, the focus has always been on the UI UX of the learner. And I think that there are going to be a lot of vendors that they're just not going to update that UI UX because they're so focused on the other thing, uh, generative that they're, you know, all kind of bouncing around with that. And, and I, I do believe that, um, you know, this, this whole premise of onboarding, which a lot of people don't talk about, you know, when we talk about learning and ecosystems, we just focus on the plan. I think you need to also look at that surrounding piece and onboarding is extremely popular. And there are vendors, I do believe that are going to increase the cost of that. I personally think it should be free because you're paying a lot of money for these things. And oh, uh, you mean onboarding, onboarding onto the ecosystem platform? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, the way I think, yeah. I'm not talking yeah. about onboarding the employee. I think it's gotcha. onboarding okay. the client. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Goes in and whether it takes three days or. I was gonna. Days. I was gonna say on onboarding is a super hot topic, right? It, still, and having these ecosystems <clears throat> to do all of these things for folks to onboard their employees is absolutely still and it is. Has it been is very a hot it, topic. It, it, but yeah, it's very crucial. And I think what you're going to see is more and more of a term called pathways, which is getting back into this whole thing around generative AI, right? Okay. Everything I'm talking about is wrapping around generative AI because that's the hot monster that's yeah. in the room and, and it's not going to disappear. Um, you know, I always say people are living in fantasy land. That being said, um, when you're looking at, uh, you know, another big trend is, um, and it comes through typically a third party, because why would a vendor want to build this? It, and that's a trend is more and more vendors are continuing to go third party, which means, you know, if I'm an expert in skills and that's all my company does, why would I want to build a skills platform? I'm going to do a deep integration. You're not going to know what it's a client. It's white label. And it, um, you know, so. There are solutions that enable you to connect all these APIs, um, your yep. API with that API with no fee. I mean, you get charged a fee, don't get me wrong, but there's no kind of, of uh, you know, a fee that um, charges per API, which can be very expensive that vendors, you know, go into. That's going to be a, you know, a, a continuous trend. There's more vendors going in there. I'll tell you one of the hottest trends overwhelmingly is coaching. It's going to be massive. And I wish it was mentoring because there's a difference, but it's all around coaching and I'm going to use generative AI here is that they're looking at how can I create something like, you know, a coach using generative AI. And I did pub, I did put out on my learning library. Uh, which you can access, is a, a study done two years ago where they found that an AI coach is as good as a human coach. Um, depending on what the thing is, overwhelmingly, they, they found this to be. But I think what you're going to see more and more is a hybrid. So you've got the AI doing the basics. Here comes the skills or, you know, what you need to go with. And then here comes the... Um, human that comes into it the biggest another the, a trend i'm also going to see with this which i is a disservice to the clients they're not going to have any analytics around this thing so you don't know how good that human is and the premise that everybody who's a coach is a master doesn't mean anything i could be an expert and know everything there is there i could be a horrible coach um and there's no metrics to tell you that and so you're kind of relying on just being an expert Kind of reminds me of the MOOCs. Remember those things, those duds? Everybody was an expert from MIT or whatever. I mean, anything. You'll be the worst professor. You don't know that. So I think coaching is going to be massive, massive. And that's going to be all the way around getting your people involved. I mean, you know, the skills and, and picking out these things that goes into it. The last thing I see that's going to be a trend is, you know, profiles already exist for each learner. I think you're going to see vast improvements on what that looks like, UI, UX, and what other additional capabilities that you have going through that. So I think those are going to be the biggest things. Obviously, uh, generative AI, which is when someone says AI is a, is a thing. And I would look for, I don't see it as a trend today. 
I could see it down two years from now, is something called an AI agent. I think that will be very big. And in fact, I do see that already kind of with some authoring tools. They just don't even know what the term is. Um, and so you're going to see that. Mm-hmm. We've had, uh, you know, Apple had a big show on Monday and uh, promoting all their new stuff. And one of the things that got people talking, including myself, uh, <laughs> was those darn goggles are back. People are making those virtual reality things and still think people are going to pay 3500 bucks for them. Is VR ever going to come out of the pit of despair? <laughs> no. I, there's actually been, you know, I just read an amazing article last night from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, the tech person. And they said, first of all, these things are heavy on their nose. They said after about 30 minutes, they started getting nauseous. Um, And that was just with the demos. I think, look, the problem with VR, it sounds fantastic. This is actually XRs, which is the combining of the old school of mixed reality. They call it XR, which is the combining of real and the augmented totally in there. You know, it looks kind of cool and impressive. First of all, it's 3,500 bucks. Who's going to buy that for their (laughs) their things? And I think even, you know, when you look at Oculus, the latest version is about $1,300 or somewhere else. this. You've got to buy these headsets for your learners. So I think what's going to, look, the reality is if I'm a huge company, I got no problem dropping the money here. Um, But... I'm, you've got a liability issue. If I trip over something, what do you think? I'm, you know, I sprained my ankle. I could sue you. People hurt their hands all the time on these things. Um, you got to drop the money for this. And you think that content is free in these things? I, I mean, I have one. Absolutely not. You got to pop a credit card in this if you want more. But if I'm putting in the content, overwhelmingly, I've seen one provider that has, or they're coming out. They, you know, they say with VR content, that's at a lower price point. Um, And and that's the only way you're going to gain mass. You have to have multiple vendors having these things at like 59 bucks because nobody's going to pay these outrageous prices. The custom, custom is great, but it ain't cheap. You're running at about 100,000 pounds, which is a little bit over about 110,000 U.S. for this stuff. To make yeah. it really quality. And so, look, you know, I think it's it's going to be a, a niche. Um, I don't think it's ever going to get out there. There's two learning systems today that say they can handle VR perfectly. You know, I think that's questionable at best. Um, and no, I don't really see it. I think it's a cool thing for a lot of people. I still buy into the nauseous. And I know people go, no, I don't have well, good for you. But you need the you need a high processing speed to do this, and you know Apple claims it's going to get a lot better. But I, um, you know, thirty five hundred that thing has to get down about one ninety nine. Matter of fact, you know what's funny is when VR rolled out, I remember a lot of people went with Google Cardboard, which was nothing more than cardboard that you put on your face, and it cost about fifteen dollars, and people were raving about. You remember that? Oh yeah. Uh, and it's <laughs> so freaking cheap. Because you so, can put your you put your cell phone in the cardboard, right? That's and, right. That's what it was. You and you're just looking, phone. you're just looking at your cell phone closer up to your face, like we need <laughs> that, that, right? We were amazed. <laughs> I have to tell you, I did a roller coaster on that. I got nauseous. Uh, and I literally just had a piece of cardboard on my face. You know, they were selling it. I mean, you can make it yourself. So yeah. I'm not yeah, let me let me let Chris get in here. I know he's got a sore throat, but uh, I can see, I can see his wheels turning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I experienced that roller coaster as well with the uh, with the Google Cardboard, and yeah, I did have a bit of motion going on, but uh, or motion reaction going on for sure. And I have seen a couple of um, use cases, um, Department of Defense uh, type use cases for, as was noted, uh, you know, VR is great for training scenarios that take place in dangerous places or need someone to have a level of mastery before stepping into the actual task. Um, so I've seen some use cases where, where the, you know, where the VR makes sense um, yeah. uh, in those, in those contexts, but for the vast majority of things it um, it's it is it's in some ways also still uh, a, a solu- it's a solution looking for a, a problem to a certain degree too. So, and it, again, 
Um, I know companies that use this, uh, you know, cruise ships love them. The military loves them. Um, but look at who's buying it. Very big companies, Fortune yeah. 500s. I mean, the military has always had cutting edge stuff. They were the first one. Yeah. You know, uh, people don't know about LRSs, but that was created for the Department of Defense. Um, XAPI, that, the military. So the military has always had cutting edge stuff um, because they can afford it. But the, yeah. that's the problem. The general masses can't. And so um, I have to be able to afford, and I'm buying custom. So I'm not just getting ahead. I got to buy the content and I have to have custom development done, which is what they're doing, you know? So I think, yeah, yeah. there are. Use that's, that's the expensive part. Yeah. The, the hardware is pricey. That's for sure. But building the actual environment that's custom to your company and being able to reuse it and build program scenarios into it and the characters and all that kind of stuff. That's where a lot of the time and resources and money really starts to eat away. And then you, you have to hire people that have the skills to do it or, or the consultants and all that. And, you know, sure. 3,500 bucks sounds expensive just for one headset, but when you need to factor in all that other stuff, now you're talking a lot of money over a long period of time. And I want to say one thing about the Apple latest one is that, um, you know, I saw a comment, well, it doesn't have this, it's heavy. I mean, it, it kind of reminds me of a, I once went to see a movie in 3D in the 90s uh, in New York City, and me and my brother were laughing that we looked like we were from this, you know, uh, Star Wars movies, the Stormtroopers. This thing was like a giant, massive, you know, it hurt your nose and eyeballs. It was cool, but that, that kind of thing, and, and the money is, is the big issue. I mean, $3,500, and I, you know, look at it, it's a recession. These companies are laying off people. Do you think they're going to run out and buy 50 um, of these things or 10? You know, I'm not kidding. Nobody has sued yet, but people sue for all types of stuff. And the moment you get injured in the workplace, that's called, um, what do they call that? Where you, you, you get that sort of thing, whatever. Like yeah. The, yeah. Now, oh, shoot. It was on the tip of my tongue. I was just going to. Yeah. Me too, but you know what it is. Workman's it, it, comp. It's, yeah, that's what you're going to be getting. Yeah, who wants to pay for that? So don't underestimate us human beings when it comes to putting things on our heads and not paying attention <laughs> whatsoever. We're having a great time. Remember, like, we just kind of quickly, I had Wii tennis. I loved it. But I lived in a house that had a, a low thing. I'm not kidding. I broke a bone in my hand because I was playing. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> Your <laughs> overhand serve was killer. Yeah, all that. <laughs> oh man. We are, we are, uh, we are at the end of our time together. Quick Craig, if you had to just use three words, what are the three top trends? Just to recap us off real quick. Generative AI coaching and, uh, and it, Increase in, in performance management, which I'm not a fan of. Hmm. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. I love it. Succinct, nice, perfect. Craig, thank you so much for hanging out with us today and sharing your knowledge. This is the kind of stuff that people need to know more about and they need to start prepping for the future. So always appreciate folks with a forward looking vision like yours. Thank you, and I greatly appreciate it. By the way, as a former radio guy, I know you said was you got a great voice. You really yeah. did on that. And you should be going professional. Again, <laughs> Domino, Domino, I see a future career for you, and uh, some type of podcast. Awesome. Well, folks, we do have to always, as as always, we do need to thank Domino, who sponsors and. Thanks for what we get to do with respect for designers and offices, drinking coffee, all the great conversations and chats that we have here. There is a link in the chat. If that's of interest to you, check that out. See what uh, maybe some of, some of the things that we can do to help your team power its learning ecosystem a little better or a little bit differently. Be sure to join our have... LinkedIn group. I just yeah. dropped that link in there. Hang out with us online. So, yeah. Craig, thanks so much. And as always, great chat, folks.
Awesome. Thanks, everybody.